Okay, let's uh, let's get started. The new EP, uh, A New Heartbeat, is out now. It's been out for a few weeks. Yep. Almost a month. Just shy. Um, why was the decision made to record an EP rather than a full album? Um, because it was it was always intended as a as a taster um, f- uh, to introduce uh, Francesco uh, Maris, our new guitar player. Mm-hmm. Um, Hugh Holding, our new bass player. Um, the, 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 there's a backstory, of course, to it. Um, so not last year, but the year before. So that's 2020. Um, I, th- I think it was 2000, late 2020. Um, uh, our uh, old guitar player uh, decided he wanted to go his, his own way. Mm-hmm. Um, so we advertised um, internationally. Um, and... Uh, uh, we got offers from Cracky literally all over the globe. A guy from Australia, um, a guy from San Francisco, um, who messaged me nonstop, um, <laughs> w- you know, wanting the position, saying that you know distance wasn't a problem, but really it was because America was in quite a heavy lockdown, and you know, um, <sighs> uh, you know, uh, and yeah, you know, uh, it was it was just a little bit too far. Um, his uh, his credentials were fantastic, but it was just a little bit too far. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, r- r- rising like a phoenix uh, above everybody else was was Francesco. Um, came to us, recommended to us through um, another mutual friend, um, and um, it's it's just proved to be a, a, a tremendous association. All but I've never met him. Um, I've never sat in the same room and jammed with him. Yep. Um, we've tried on numerous occasions um, to fly him over. Um, and our country has different regulations to Germany where he lives. He's Italian, comes from Sardinia. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we have uh, two Italians in the band now. Um, and um, we've managed to, uh, to, to write the new album together. Um, but um, I had a track, um, Red Mist, and um, he uh, obviously talks to Jack in you know in their native Italian tongue, um, and um, they they wrote a song together, um, which was a new heartbeat, uh, and really um, it was it was perfect, uh, it was uh, perfect for the for, for the whole project. Mm. Um, great title, a new heartbeat. Um, you know, new new blood in the band, new new hearts beating, yeah. uh, all that kind of association. Um, and it's it, it's <clears throat> we we had it. Um, uh, we recorded it all in, all in our own studios. Um, I actually recorded. Um, I've probably got the most old fashioned studio because I'm old fashioned. <laughs> um, so, so um, Gav Gray, the, the, uh, um, the, the last bass player, um, long, you know, long standing bass player of the Tigers who left last year, yeah. um, he, he's got a great studio. So, so I, I went to his studio and recorded my guitar tracks with him because he's actually playing on, on the EP. Um, yeah. And he was very, very gracious about it. He said, "Do you want me to play on the EP?" Um, uh, he, he, he had recorded on it, but then then Hugh joined, and he said, "Listen, d- you know, do you want Hugh to, to replace the tracks?" Do you want... And I said, "No, it'll it, it'll you know, it's it's done now. Um, it, it, you know, it, it's great. Let's just leave the way things are, and it, and it can be a legacy, you know." And he and he's, you know, we're we're, we're still great friends. Yeah. Um, you know, there was there was no. You know, oh, I'm leaving because you know you eat more lollipops than me and all that kind of stuff. You know, he's uh, he just um, I, I recruited him. Um, you know, all those years ago. Um, in fact, he played um, in the Tigers in 1999, um, which was um, we played Wacken. Yeah, we headlined Wacken. Um, just like a one-off show, which was 20 to celebrate 20 years of the Tigers. Uh, we were asked to do it, um, and at the time there was only Jess and I were available to do it out of the original band. So we recruited three local Tyneside musicians, uh, and Gav was one of them. 
Um, so, you know, um, I, I've known him since then. Um, and um, yeah, I recorded my guitars there. Um, it was sent across to Marco, um, and I'm going to pronounce your name, your surname wrong, Marco, um, and Angioni. Um, and he mixed it for us. He was recommended to us by Target, our record company. Um, he, he, he has a studio in Copenhagen, which is where our record company headquarters are. Mm. Um, he did a great job. Um, we sent it across to Harry Hess in Germany, who mastered the last two albums, uh, and he mastered the tracks for us. Um, and, and, you know, his, his input uh, was tremendous as well. Um, and, and we came out with a with a great, great sounding, um, you know, uh, EP. Really, yeah. uh, we also decided it was originally going to be a three track, and we decided. Um, well, I, I, I had another one of me um, useless brainstorms, and rang our manager and said, "Can it be four tracks?" <laughs> and they said, "Why?" Uh, and I said, "Well, why not?" Um, I've always had a bit of a burning desire to do. Uh, fire clown because we've never played it live it was just one of those tracks that um we probably did we, we did play it live back in you know early 80s mm. um but but not in the last 22 years since the band you know as as sort of you know um come back as it were mm. um and um they said uh, tom our manager said yeah do it um so we recorded that as a, as a fourth track because killer's was Francesco's choice. Um, I said to Francesco, what's, what's, you know, out of the old, the old albums, what, what's your favorite track? And he said, oh, Killers. Mm -hmm. um, so Killers was always, was always the number, th the number three track and Fire Clown came in at number four. Um, and um, the benefit, <clears throat> or certainly one of the benefits of doing um, older tracks today mm -hmm. is you have you know, 40 years worth of technology, uh, advanced technology, which you didn't have back then. And I know purists will say, oh, no, it sounded great back then. <sighs> yeah, it, it, it probably did sound great back then. But from, from an artist's point of view, I think it's always nice just to refresh um, and, and just to get a little bit of um, today uh, in, in, into an old track without, without changing it too much. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you think um, it used to be uh, more live albums. You know, you'd hear a live album that was released, say, six or seven years after, say, the first album was released. And you'd think, oh, that song sounds really different now. And they play it a different way or whatever. Even, say, Judas Priest, the way they play Diamonds and Rust, which isn't their song anyway. But that on their original uh, recording compared to how they play it now is completely different. So re-recording a song is as much a, um, a great way to get that new interpretation out there as, say, a live album or a live EP, at least in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's probably, that, that, that's kind of the backstory. Um, it, was, it was really um, to get something, because the album was never going to be ready. No. Um, uh, you know, now, uh, January gone. Um, in fact, the, the new album, although we're, um, we are a quarter of the way rec through recording it, um, will not be um, uh, sort of seeing the light of day, as it were, until probably January 2023. Okay. Um, just with, with our commitments, and, and um, we had shows. Uh, last October, mm -hmm. which three days before um, we were due to play, we had to cancel them because Craig, our drummer, got COVID. Um, and we'd paid for all the PCR tests for Jack and Francesco. And, oh, my God, um, all, all that. So that didn't go ahead. Um, and then we had shows in January, which had to be pushed back to the end of the year. We had British shows in February, which are now scattered throughout the year. Yeah. Um, tonight, I'm supposed to be playing in Milan. Oh, right. um, get a moment, tonight, we're supposed to, 
Last night we're supposed to be playing in Rome. Yeah, quite. Yes. Um, and tomorrow night we're supposed to be playing in Bologna. So um, that's now been put to October mm. because um, Jack tells us that although the nightclubs in Italy are now allowed to open uh, mm. and the rock clubs, um, they can't serve alcohol. Oh. So the, the promoters are saying, well, what is the point of putting yeah. on shows if people can't come and have a drink? You know, um, so <laughs> really, it's it's a that's I, I, you know that, that's what I've been told. So yeah. the shows have been rescheduled for October now. The Italian shows. Oh. Um, so the the, um, the next the, the the upcoming shows kind of all start in May. Mm -hmm. um, we're headlining a festival in Madrid, um, and um, June we've got Cambridge Rock Festival and somewhere else um bradford. so we're having pardon bradford bradford yes yeah yes. are you coming to that one i'm hoping to you. Well, great okay um do you need to be on the guest list yeah, that would be nice okay we'll talk Is about that after after the interview i guess no problem <laughs> yeah no problem um um so so yes so we're having to kind of record around commitments um you know people's personal commitments um and um it's kind of but it's good because sometimes you know when you record an album uh, in days gone by you would take um two to three weeks you know out of your life go into a studio uh, intensely record 10 12 14 tracks whatever um and some <clears throat> I'm not sure you get the best out of people in those situations. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost it's like you're under the spotlight, you know, and, and, and under the gun, as it were, you know, time-wise, because time is money in, a, in an expensive recording studio. You know, you, an hour goes by and, 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 you know, there's a couple hundred quid, you know, and uh, <laughs> um, and that's, that's in the cheaper ones. Um, so, yeah. So it gives us time to, when we've recorded something, to look at it. Uh, make sure it's, um, we've been doing that for the past year, mind, uh, with the demos. They've been to and froing, and um, we, we kind of think we've, we've got them. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll ring Francesco. Uh, he lives just outside Dusseldorf, and I'll ring him and I'll say, um, his English is um, about 85% out of 100. So I, I, have to, I, I speak a bit slower than I'm speaking to you. Yeah. Um, and w w we always get there. Um, you know, I'll say to him, what, what, what are you playing there? What do you think if we change this to, to you know, if we change the end, uh, you know, the, the middle eight, do you want to play the first guitar solo? Will I, what, how, how do you want to do it? Um, and I just think it's, it's a lot more relaxed and there's no pressure whatsoever. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, when I'm recording my guitar tracks, I'm going into a, um, a local studio um, actually, where we recorded the Crazy Night Sessions EP uh, mm -hmm. a few years ago uh, mm -hmm. in Chester Street, um, a guy called Dave Hills, who owns uh, Trillions Rock Club in Newcastle City Centre. Um, he, he, he has a nice little studio. Um, mm -hmm. And I've just, just sat with Dave. You know, he's a fellow guitar player. Um, and he just says, yeah, you can believe let's let's record this let's record it four times and we'll pick the best one and he's just great yeah. uh and there's absolutely no pressure yeah. um and, and i'll you know I'll, I'll play something a guitar solo or a bit of a guitar solo you go yeah i like the front don't like the middle let's you know let's do this and it's just you know it, it's very very how i want it to be yeah. um <laughs> and i think back to all those stressful times, um, you know, in, in, in all the studios that I've recorded in in the last 43 years, mm. 44 years, something like that. Um, Crikey, this is the most least stressful um, thing, you know, event that I've ever, you know, been involved in. It's, and, and it's great. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's great because, like you say, you, you want that time to really perfect the songs. You want them, you, every band wants their album to be as, as good as it can possibly be. And uh, like you say, when you go into a studio and you've got 10 days or two weeks or whatever, then it gets to a point where you just kind of go, oh, that one will do. That take will do. 
And yeah, you know, when you've got so much time, you can be really proud of the um, of the product that you, you um, end up with. You know, I, I was speaking with uh, Tino from Praying Mantis recently. He was yeah, saying yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, it, it, of, co- of course, it can go the other way, and and the album comes out, and the journalists go, "What? You've had all this time." <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I, let, 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 let's hope that isn't going to happen. Um, no, no. With the EP, to be quite honest with you, um, we didn't have this. Um, the amount of reviews that we've had mm-hmm. worldwide for the EP, I think, um, I think the, the lowest we've dropped is eight out of ten. Most of them are nine, nine point five. Some are tens. Yeah. Um, it's it more reviews than than ritual. Um, I think that's. I think that's due to the, the 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 sad times that we live in, in as much as the COVID times that we live in, uh, and people I think are craving something different, something yeah. new. Um, um, and the other factor is we have a tremendous press guy who works for the record company, um, yeah. Fernando Reis, um, who who actually lives in Portugal. Um, or oddly enough, um, but it just shows you you can live anywhere in the world and 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 you know and and work for a, a record company and you know um, get great results because you know he's he's got his finger on on the pulse and it's, I've never seen so many reviews. There's like three and four coming through every day. Yeah. I haven't got time to read them. Yeah. Just take my word; they're all great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so have you got have you got it there? Uh, I have, have you, got, have you got anything? Yeah. 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 And yeah. I bought it. And, 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 I didn't, um, I didn't, I didn't no. on the promo copy. I wanted to buy it because it's only four songs. It's not going to be that expensive, you know. So. Yeah. Sorry. Well, uh, yeah. And I, I don't know whether you were going to touch on downloads, but um, downloading is great. Um, mm. I wouldn't know how to do it. Uh, I've never mm. downloaded anything in my life. Um, I, I honestly haven't. Um, to me, again, because I'm a bit old fashioned. I I like to go out and buy the product if I yeah. like something. If I like an album or I like a CD, I like to buy it because I like the booklet, hmm. which is which is very modern for me. The CD, but the uh, LPs, you know, if if they had a, an inner sleeve, hmm. uh, which had stuff on, you know, I can remember um, years ago s- sitting. Um, you know, in, in my mum and dad's lounge with a stereogram next to me, my headphones plugged into it, um, and, and, you know, listening to all these wonderful, like, you know, ZZ Top, um, Fandango and stuff like that, and, and just gazing over the photographs and looking at the clothes they were wearing and the, 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 the amplifiers and the guitars they were using. And by the time you took it all in, the, the needle was clicking at the end of the first side, and you hadn't even heard the first side because you've been concentrating on this all this you know wonderful paraphernalia. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of thought goes into it, and, and a lot of time. Um, there certainly is for hours. Um, if you got if you if you uh, I don't know whether you whether you've got the album Ritual the last the last I don't album. Um, but it has the, the inner sleeve or, or the booklet. The, mm. the booklet all folds out because it's actually a treasure map. Oh, right. um, and on the treasure map are all points that, that they, of um, things that, that, that appertain um, to, to each member of the band's lives. Um, you know, we've named um, rivers and mountain ranges and coves and things. Or, 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 and they've, they've all got names which which like mean something to us all. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's, there's there's a lot of thought because it goes into these things. It's yeah. not just oh here's a here's a cover. Here's, here's the names of the people that made it. Thanks. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I, I always I always think it's very for me it's very important um, to buy the actual product um, because a download when you. I've had this conversation with n- numerous people. When you download something, so you see, so you pay your, I don't know, you're downloading a track, mm. you're paying your whatever it is, 99p, pound, 150, whatever, what, I don't know how much it costs. What have you actually got? Mm. It, you haven't, you've got, what is it? Where is it? It's, mm. it's, it, it's a, it's something that's, that's on a chip on in your phone somewhere or something. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's nothing. It's nothing you can't hold. It's nothing tangible, is it? No. It, it, it it's it, it's it's a. 
I don't even know how to describe it. Um, it's it's a, uh, a it almost feels more of a collection of songs than an album. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, uh, you, you're just getting that you know that one song, that one track, and and you, you don't get any of this amazing, delightful artwork, you know, or anything like that. It, it's just it just appears as a name, I suppose, on the screen of your film. Yeah, um, I mean, it might have the uh, album cover or the EP cover come up on your phone or the MP3 right, or whatever. Cool. Okay. But you know, even then, you you're going like that with it, as opposed to like a big, beautiful uh, sleeve that you're looking at. Yeah, and I mean, Craggy, I was in my element. If if the album or the band that I was, you know, was on the record on the turntable had a had a gatefold sleeve, but Rush actually brought out a triple gatefold sleeve of All the Wills of Stage, the live yeah. album. Oh my God, I was. Uh, I, I don't think I've listened to the to, to the album yet. <laughs> uh, I still keep looking at the, still keep looking at the all the photographs of uh, one. Anyway, yeah. I digress. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, um, Tigers of Pansang is very strongly linked with the new wave of British heavy metal. Um, I, like I said, I've spoken to a few bands recently that were also sort of linked, like I say, Praying Mantis, uh, Satan, Vardis, a few others. Um, and it's interesting because a lot of bands seem to have a different view on it. There's bands that say that, that they had nothing really to do with us. There's some bands that say hated it. There's some bands that say didn't like it, but it was good for us. And some bands that just fully embrace it. Um, where does Tigers of Pantang rank on that um, scale? Um, I, I, you know, I've, I've got to say, really, I, I can't, I can't understand why where people would, would sidestep it or whatever, you know, mm. if if they were around at that time. It, it's something that happened, uh, and you, you really you have to fully embrace it, uh, yeah. really, be, if it's where you've come from. Um, otherwise, you're denying your, you're denying your roots, really. Yeah. Um, we were lucky enough to be mentioned in Jeff Barton's original um, uh, 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 double page spread in sounds. Mm. Um, and he mentioned us, you know, in the same breath as Iron Maiden, Saxon and Def Leppard. Yeah. Um, so I've always considered our, you know, the four of us as, of like being like the, the four bands that were the, you know, that formed the, the foundations of the new wave of British heavy metal movement, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and then the floodgates opened and, you know, lots and lots of bands came along, you know, Raven, Diamond Head, um, you know, all the rest of them, you know, Diamond Head were signed uh, to MCA, uh, our record label, um, nearly two years after us. Um, so, you know, um, we, we, we were definitely definitely in there at the beginning, as it were. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I fully embrace it. Um, I, I mean, we play a lot of our set. Uh, a lot of our live set does have um, numbers, you know, songs from mm. from that era, and that's because people still want to hear them, yeah. um, and, and and we we still want to play them. Um, but we do, we, you know, we do release new albums and we do write write new material. But it's not too far too far away from from where the Tigers' roots were, yeah. because if it was too far away, then it would be two completely different bands, and 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 we're not. Um, when you hear, hopefully, the Tigers of Pantang music, you'll know it's us yeah. because um, we we did have one album, um, Noises from the Cat House, which was it had a couple of um, uh, slightly different style songs on it, if you like. Yeah. Um, and I'm not talking about jazz funk or anything like that. I'm, I'm talking about um, maybe heavier than than we would probably yeah. go to. Um, but in saying that, the closing track on the album, um, Master of Illusion, is probably one of my favourite tracks. You know, it, it's it's 10 minutes long, for God's sake, <laughs> um, in, in three parts, but it's, it's there's, there's, it takes you, that track takes you on a journey of, of um, several music musical genres, really, yeah. uh, in, in, in the one go. Um, but the new material, um, this this new album, oh my goodness, uh, 
it's just so exciting recording it. Um, it's every album you make. Mm. I always look at it as a staircase, and every album of every album a band makes, not just the Tigers, any band, yeah. you're looking to climb up the, then to the next stair. Nobody wants to go down because no. that's the wrong way. You want to go up and you want to keep going up. And you should never reach the top of the staircase because if you do, then where else is there to go? Yeah. So you should always be you should always be striving to to, to move up, move on, and move up. Um, and I I think this album I I think we're gonna we're we're gonna climb two stairs, uh, you know, uh, and not just one. Um, it's I, I I came up with the ideas um, kind of it, it, when lockdown happened yeah. um, and and we couldn't play live anymore. So we played our last show we played was in March 22 uh, years ago. Um, yeah, two years ago. Um, we went out, we played a, um, a headline show in Holland on the Friday. We opened up for Saxon in Dusseldorf on the Saturday. Um, and uh, we did a headline show in Belgium on the Sunday, came home and there was lockdown. Um, so I, I, I set about you know ideas and, and stuff like that um and when francesco um came on the scene and, and, and it was you know was, was formally welcomed into the into the ambush yeah um uh, I, I sent him all the, the song ideas that i had um he took them into his studio um re-recorded them you know worked on them sent them back and i had and the crikey he's just made them into he's made them from a um f from great songs into monstrously great songs um so yeah we're, we're, i mean we're all you know pretty um jack and um craig um our drummer uh, write the lyrics and the melodies between them um and it's a great it's a great um it's a great partnership that we all have because if, if if I come up with something quite aggressive, um, Craig and Jack can put something quite poppy on the top of it. So it's a bit like adding sugar to vinegar. Um, it you, you get a kind of like a like a nice balance mm -hmm. in the middle, um, and it just works really really well for us. Uh, and with Francesco on board, um, it's it, it's it, he's he's putting double cream into it. You know, it's like it's tremendous. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's hold on to your hats. This is going to be it's going to be pretty good. Oh, good. It's just a shame that it's going to be at least ten months before we can hear it. Right? And yeah, well, yeah. As I say, that that that's around commitments. I, mm. We're hoping to have it recorded by June. Okay. Uh, all done, and then, and then it'll be it, it'll be it'll go across um, to Copenhagen to be mixed, um, um, and then the record company um, will do their their, their magic. Um, I, I think that they need quite a bit of lead time to organise things and get promo promos in place. And in fact, after June, um, you know there are it, it gets quite heavy for us that shows wise yeah. um and, and we're gonna to have to find time to make a video as well oh yeah um and it's not just oh well we'll all just get together on sunday morning and you know uh, and shoot a video we have to fly jack in from um from you know from florence we have to fly a francesco in from dusseldorf yeah. um you know and and yeah we're, we're, it's it's not just that easy anymore um yeah. in saying that we can we, we can sometimes sometimes we can fly jack here for less than the cost of a well god we can these days less than the cost of a tank of petrol from somebody traveling up from london you know yeah. um uh so yeah it's it, it, that's the reason why th things kind of take a little bit longer um although uh, we've just been asked to contribute to a um download charity album um, although, and I've just been told today that it's going to be in a physical form as well for um, Ukrainian relief, oh, uh, which is quite nice. Um, so, and I, I, 
I, I don't think I, I, I don't know whether I'm allowed to say which track's going to go on it. But anyway, um, yeah, it's uh, it, it it'll be an honour to be to, to be on that uh, and help those poor people. Absolutely, yeah. Well, Rob, I'd love to pick your brain some more, but unfortunately, I'm running out of time now. Well, another interview coming up. Thank you very dog much. Is sat cross-legged at the moment, so he needs to go out. Well, let's have, let, no, let's have a look at the dog. Can you bring that camera around? Let me have a look. Uh, I... Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Excellent. Right, you look after yourself, Rob, and thank you again for speaking with me. I've really appreciate it. <laughs> Walkies. <laughs>